Thank you for joining me for a look at why markets crash. Now, there's no formal definition of a crash, so it can be a move of variable size, and it can be to the upside as well as the downside. Normally, the ones that get our attention are when prices drop suddenly. And a crash can occur in anything that's traded, be it a stock, an ETF, currency, commodity, an option. It's just a very quick move that is reversed, at least in part, just as quickly. And both types of moves, whether it's a down crash or an up crash, are explained by the market structure idea. The market is simply a computer that matches buy and sell orders. So buy orders are placed at what's known as a bid. And let's say a buyer is willing to pay $9.99. He or she would say, I'm bidding $9.99 for 100 shares. Let's say we have a seller who st thinks their shares are worth $10.01. They can say, I'm offering or I'm asking $10.01 on 100. The market is simply a location where these bids and asks are tracked in what's called an order book. And this is what an order book looks like. So we have two key pieces of information, the number of shares and the price. And what we see is the difference between the best bid and the best ask is two cents. That's known as the spread. Spreads are often small. This is on SPY, so it's a very liquid ETF that tracks the S&P 500. And it shows us what sellers are willing to accept and what buyers are willing to pay. This is a snapshot in time. These numbers change frequently for a variety of reasons, but there's a lot of firms that make just a couple of cents a day from trading, and they're willing to go in there and move the bids and ask as they see fit to try to generate activity. And what they're trying to do is just if they see somebody's willing to buy at 246.90, they're going to try to get shares just a little bit under that and try to deliver to them. So we have a lot going on behind the scenes, but it all comes down to what this order book looks like. It's not always that tight. Here's Netflix, very frequently traded stock near the same price. Here the spread is 23 cents between the best bid and best ask. And notice the number of shares. They're not as large. So Let's say you want to sell 300 shares. You're going to have to work through the bids. And your fills are going to range from 55 shares at 270, 276. You're going to end up having to sell some at 270, 259. You're going to clear out the top of the book. And you're just going to clear it line by line until you have everything that you want done. The best bid after all of that is cleared is then going to be 13 shares at 272.59. So for a second or two, we may see the spread even widen. In that case, it could widen to 40 cents. But we're also going to see the last trade reported down 40 cents. This is how markets move. By filling orders from the order book, the market just chugs along, moving along a few cents at a time throughout the day. But orders get filled through this order book all the time. Now, that's why a crash develops. As we move further away from the market price, liquidity disappears. There might be a thousand shares between $9.50 and $10. Um, but after that, Somebody may put in an order to sell 10 shares at $9 as a stop loss. Someone else may have 10 shares at $8.50 and so on. Somebody else may just have random buy points throughout. A lot of times a broker will just place what's called a stub bid into the market. Maybe, you know, bidding a dollar asking $900 on a $100 stock. If liquidity disappears, those orders have been filled. So that's why they do it. They have a chance to really make a windfall. It only happens a few times a year, but it's explained by just liquidity disappearing from the order book. 
After the large move, all kinds of hidden orders appear. The market makers, high frequency trading firms, institutional investors hide their orders. They'll put in different order formats showing 10 shares, but they're actually looking for 10,000. And these orders then quickly reverse the decline. So that's all a crash is. Liquidity dries up, something happens, and the order book empties out. And then all of these hidden orders come into play and it's quickly reversed. Crashes have always been a risk. Now, we're prone to attributing them to computers, and computers are simply making them faster. Crashes were often worse in the good old days. That crash in 1929 took months to unfold. Crash in 1987, first time we had computers driving a crash, just took a day, really, and it was all over for the most part. Then the next day we had some liquidity trading and there's various reasons that traders make moves after a crash. But crashes are a part of trading. They're not driven by the computers. The computers are doing what the humans tell them to do. So the computer's saying, I'm gonna buy or sell only because a company, a firm, an individual has told them to do that. What this means for you is your stop loss orders are an invitation to trade and if you place it it's going to get filled in a crash many individuals learned this with apple when they had stop loss orders well below the market price and all of a sudden apple cratered and took out their orders what that does is it locks in the loss if your order is filled during a crash your loss is permanent and you will not have a chance to participate in the recovery of course, sometimes a rapid decline is not a crash, it's a reversal of a trend. In that case, your stop loss order protects your capital. That's what makes it so difficult to decide. Statistically, stop loss orders are going to hurt your performance, but psychologically, they're going to help you sleep at night. Decide which you prefer, psychological security or financial security, and use stop loss orders accordingly. But now you understand stop losses are going to be filled in a crash and crashes are going to happen. It's just market structure. Thank you.